those questions asked, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Joseph Cole to lead us in the pledge of session will allow for a few proclamations that we have here today and again we have some honored guests and uh, our first uh, presentation and proclamation I did call Legislator Shaw. Thank you very much for this on behalf of my program at the agency. Thank you both. Well, sticking with the purple theme, uh, we have some very distinguished people. 
harvest advance uh, by right. And I'd like to call up uh, Legislator Brzezinski to uh, make some introductions and presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Fellow legislators, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to introduce you to three people here. Um, first of all, Willie Nazario, he's the commander, Department of New York, uh, Military Order of Purple Heart. <laughs> Mr. Joseph Procola, he's a senior vice commander of the Department of New York. Staff, Department of New York Military Order of Purple Heart. And I've, and I've asked all of them if they would want to say a few words and uh, however it is, it is. Thank you, John. Before I make my remarks, I wish to uh, introduce uh, a couple more of the patriots who are with us today. Uh, Phil Capraro is the chaplain of the Central New York Chapter 490 Military <laughs> uh, Ken Griffin, a Herkimer County resident, and Anthony DeFrino, Herkimer County resident. <laughs> and former members of the General Herkimer Chapter 130 Military Order of the Purple Heart. <clears throat> On behalf of the members of the Department of New York Military Order of the Purple Heart of the USA, its chapters and all recipients of the Purple Heart residing in Herkimer County. We are honored to be here today before the body of the Herkimer County legislators as Herkimer County has declared Purple Heart, Purple Heart County. And I commend Herkimer County for continuing to honor its veterans, especially its Purple Heart recipients. There are many veterans living and deceased from Herkimer County who have defended our freedom by serving in the United States military. Many of these veterans are and were recipients of the Purple Heart awarded for being wounded or killed in combat with the declared enemy of the United States of America. The wounded who received this medal and the families who received this medal posthumously have made it possible for all of us to live as free men and women. Some question why. Why are we requesting the designation as a Purple Heart state, county, city, or town? By receiving the designation, we connect, we connect with the past, the present, and the future. We acknowledge the recipients of the Purple Heart, and we perpetuate their memories. But we do even more than that. We are allowing our children and our children's children an opportunity to remember. Freedom is not free. When these children ask their parents, what is a Purple Heart County? We open a door for parents to explain what sacrifice, duty, and devotion to one's nation really means. Brave men and women continue to sacrifice their lives to guarantee our country remains the symbol of freedom throughout the world. We must not let them be forgotten. The designation of a Purple Heart state, county, city, or town recognizes the service and sacrifices of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is William Nazario. I'm the uh, state commander for the military of the Purple Heart. <clears throat> when I came home from Vietnam, somebody had told me I'd be standing before such a distinguished uh, legislative body. I would have said, no way. The times are changing, and we must change with it. Today we honor those who have worn the uniform in defense of our nation. Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration still given out in the world today. So it means something. As state commander, one of the things that we have started at the national level was to declare not only towns, states, cities, but now we're going after colleges and universities. Why? Because that's where our young people who come back from Iraq are going. They are, in a way, they're similar to our greatest generation, the World War II veterans who went back to school. I feel that this generation 
is going to give a lot to us. Therefore, let us not forget their sacrifice. We will be there to honor them in declaring universities, colleges, Purple Heart Universities, Purple Heart Colleges. At the present time, I am actively uh, seeking legislation for the new Tappan Zee Bridge further down south to be named the Purple Heart Memorial Bridge. I'm working along with several congressmen, senators, uh, assembly people, and it's not about parties. This is a bipartisan effort. When it comes to veterans, we should always remember it's about the veteran. Let's reach out and let's help. We are a veterans advocacy group. We do a lot of advocacy work. It's not just ceremonial as far as we're concerned. Somebody has to speak, especially with today's economic times, cutbacks and everything else. The last thing we want to do is deny a veteran what he has earned. So this is very important, the proclamation. And yeah, I'll be coming back up this way because we went to a restaurant down the road and uh, free breakfast, can't beat that. <laughs> Welcome to Herkimer County. <laughs> so um, thank you all, you know. Um, it's very important, this is educational for our children to see. One suggestion that I do make to you is do what Putnam County did, which was our first county um, to be declared or proclaimed a Purple Heart County. They put signs at a, every major entrance into the county itself saying you are now entering a Purple Heart County. It's educational in purpose. It's educational because a child riding in a car will ask a parent, what is a Purple Heart? And if the parent doesn't know, they'll do some research. And that's how we keep our Americanism alive, what we've fought for for so many years. Once again, I'm honored to be here. Thank you for honoring the Purple Heart. Uh, I don't know how to follow these two gentlemen, except by saying that I'm honored to be here. I'm very proud of Herkimer County for what they're doing today. I want to bring us back to reality also. Number 22, does that string ring a bell with anybody? As a former high school principal, I always ask questions. What does number 22 mean to any of us? It's the number of veterans and servicemen who commit suicide each day. Why do they commit suicide? What has happened into their lives? We are in tough economic times. with a huge amount of you know, people, young people coming back who are unemployed. We have a huge number of people, uh, young people, who are veterans who are homeless. They're homeless and they're unemployed. And what does that produce? That produces a sense of hopelessness. We've got to renew our sense of hope, or their sense of hope, in this country. And what better way to do that by pressuring our Veterans Administration, pressuring our congressmen, pressuring our legislative branches, okay, to provide the best possible care for our veterans. What greater... Thank you. What greater shame is it to hear and read about in the newspaper that another veteran has taken a life? This is an epidemic that is being ignored. Please, and I know that I can count in Herkimer County, okay? Thank you very much. Does anybody here have any questions to the gentleman why we've got him so on? Anybody got any questions? Mr. Chairman, I, I know you had that. I'll answer. You're good. Okay. So what you sit down here and let me try to do it. Sure.
I'm joking. We promise. <laughs> so, you're on the hook. <laughs> We have with us this afternoon Veterans Department Head Charlie Miller, who would like to say a few words. Charlie? Thank you. I just, I don't want to repeat what we've already discussed in this be a repetition. I just want to state that the Military Order of Purple Heart is an organization, just like many others, who support, um, provide advocacy and services for veterans. The difference between the membership that these gentlemen paid to get into their organization is one that I'm sure nobody in this room would like to pay or would be willing to pay. To carry the burden of the wounds, the scars, and, and everything that goes with it. And for that, we owe you a, a huge debt, one that can never be repaid. But mark our word, and I, I hope I speak for the rest here, that today, tomorrow, every day, we honor a purple heart and we're grateful to have you here. We also have here with us today Governor Andrew Cuomo's regional rep for the Mohawk Valley, my friend Matt Pinal. I'd like to say that he's here for two reasons, actually. One for Andrew and one for his grandfather that I wanted him to tell the story. I'm going to keep this very brief. I, I know everyone's busy. Thank you, John. Um, thank you, gentlemen, for all that you've done. Uh, I, uh, I was extremely lucky. Um, I had two grandfathers, one that served in World War I, my mother's uh, father, <coughs> and my father's father served in World War II. He was a meek man, very mild. Um, we knew he had served in World War II, but he would never talk about it. He would say, I was just a soldier. So when I was about 13 years old, um, he called me over to their house. And on the coffee table was an old photo album and a box, a little black box. And he started telling me his story. During the Battle of the Bulge, my grandfather served on what was called a, correct me if I'm wrong, a half track, a hell track. They drove around with the tanks and provided the anti aircraft uh, fire. During the Battle of the Bulge, um, they took machine gun fire, uh, the half track tipped over, and uh, my grandfather and, and his uh, guys that were with him were thrown off, and two of them were knocked unconscious. When my grandfather told it, is there was an exploded shell, unexploded shell. Uh, not far from them, and so the citation was for bravery because he was able to pull two men who had knocked unconscious out before the shell exploded. And my grandfather said when he woke up uh, in the hospital, he found a purple heart pinned to a sheet. Um, when I was about 20, I told my grandfather that I wanted to go into public service and I wanted to uh, serve in government. And so he went and he got that little black box and he gave me his purple heart. Three years ago, uh, my grandfather died after a long battle for leukemia. And uh, as we were getting ready for the funeral, uh, my brothers and I, I was I'm one of three boys, had made the decision that my grandfather would be buried with his Purple Heart because he wasn't just a hero to us. He really was a hero to his nation. So I think about him every day. And I can't help but say thank you enough. Uh, it really is it meant a lot for me to be here and to be able to read a letter uh, from our governor. Dear friends, it is my pleasure to send greetings and congratulations to everyone gathered here to celebrate Herkimer County's designation as a Purple Heart County. The Empire State's long tradition of service and sacrifice for the good of the nation is an enduring source of pride to all of its residents. 
As the U.S. military's oldest honor, the Purple Heart Medal recognizes the indomitable spirit that characterizes so many members of our armed services. The recipients of this award know firsthand what it means to serve others at great personal sacrifice. And they remain an inspiration to all New Yorkers. We can all be proud of Herkimer's contribution to the cause of freedom. I extend my heartfelt gratitude to all those gathered here today to celebrate this honor, especially our veterans. The warmest regards and best wishes for a successful event, Andrew and Paul. Now I would like to have all the veterans that we have here today award the Purple Heart Please step forward here. <coughs> Jean Medine would be our chairperson of the Veterans Committee and Jean. And Jean is going to read the proclamation. Thank you. First off, I'm very proud to be here among such wonderful <coughs> soldiers. Um, as a member of the legislature, as chairman of the Veterans Administration, and as a mother of uh, currently son that's serving in the U.S. Air Force. So I'm very proud to read this proclamation for you. Whereas the Purple Heart is awarded to any member of the United States Armed Forces who was wounded or killed in combat with the declared enemy of the United States of America. And whereas the organization now known as the Military Order of the Purple Heart was formed in 1932 for the protection and mutual interest of all who have received the decoration. And whereas the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women from Herkimer County who served in the armed forces have been vital in maintaining the freedoms and way of life enjoyed by our citizens. And whereas many citizens of our community have earned the Purple Heart Medal as a result of being wounded or killed while engaged in combat with an enemy force now Therefore, be it resolved that Vincent J. Bono, Chairman of the Herkimer County Legislature, you deem it fitting and appropriate to proclaim Thursday, October 3rd, 2013, as Purple Heart Day in Herkimer County, honoring the service and sacrifice of our nation's men and women in uniform, wounded or killed by the enemy while serving to protect the freedoms enjoyed by all Americans given under the hand in the great seal of the County of Herkimer, New York, in the year of our Lord, 2013. Vincent J. Bono, Chairman of the Herkimer County Legislature. Now, one thing I would like to do, please, one of you please state your name and um, the rank and branch from which you serve. Please. Oh, I guess you have to do that. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> William Nazario, United States Marine Corps, Vietnam 6970 uh, E3. Joel Fricola, U.S. Army, Spec 5. Vietnam, 1969-1970. Kenneth Griffin, I served with the 29th Infantry Division, uh, one of the assault divisions on Omaha Beach, under the 1st Division, the 29th Corps. I went in when I was 18. I served four and a half years. I got out of the service at that. My mother and father was assigned I could be married. <laughs> <laughs> I was a T4 when I got out of the army. He neglected to uh, mention him and I are World War II veterans. Battle of the Bulge also. This is the end of the war right then and there. Anyway, I'm Phil Cabrero, Sergeant. Uh, wounded three times in the service. So, uh, 
I come out uh, after 30 years of service. I stayed in. I was with my missionary. So I stayed in. Did my 30 years. Now I'm out collecting your tax dollars. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Neil Gross. I was with the Big Red One, 1st Infantry Division, Vietnam. I served as a Sergeant First Class. I also stayed in 39 years. <laughs> I went to, I became uh, uh, an officer and uh, served in the National Guard and Reserves, retired as Lieutenant Colonel in 2007. And uh, Joe, I'd like to present you with these proclamations uh, for everybody here. I don't want them to get bent, that's why I didn't take them out of there, but maybe you can do that later. And uh, I just wanted to say just a few words. Um, on behalf of our chairman, our county administrator, our attorney, our secretaries, all legislators, and everyone present here today, from our hearts, we are forever grateful for what you went through to keep our country safe and people free. We are so proud of you all, and we really mean it. If it wasn't for you and your sacrifices, we would not be here today. presentation about the new directive by the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. It's the STAR registration program, which I hopefully everyone in the room is becoming aware of. Uh, so we're going to have yeah, just a short uh, little presentation that we'd like to give. To give a quick overview, uh, there was new legislation enacted as, real as part of Real Property Tax Law 425, which is the STAR program which requires all homeowners receiving the basic STAR exemption to register with the tax department. In order to receive the exemption for the next year, 2014, and going forward, um, this applies to more than 2.6 million recipients of currently of the basic STAR exemption. 
Um, it's important, the third bullet is probably the most important, um, what we're finding uh, is miscommunication, is that the senior citizens who are currently receiving the enhanced STAR exemption, so in other words, you're over 65 years of age and your income level is less than the ceiling, uh, those people who are getting the enhanced are not part of this registration process, okay? They're gonna continue to do what they're doing right now they have to uh, submit their income uh, verification documents every year with the, assessor, with the assessor, the local assessor. They're gonna continue to do that. And this registration process is strictly for the basic holders who are under 65 and making less than $500,000 a year. Uh, you're gonna see this phone number quite a bit in the presentation um, and in the handouts. We do have a call center of about 150 <coughs> Department of Tax and Finance personnel who are strictly charged with answering questions and helping people register uh, for, th for this program. Um, and there's the number, 4572036. The purpose of this initiative um, is going to be to assure that the benefits of the STAR program provided by the state, which is translates to $2.6 billion annually the state pays to school districts for the star um, only go to qualified homeowners um, and to eliminate any intentional fraud or unintentional duplicate exemption of some people we found that were getting the exemption on two different properties or something similar um, really the, the, the actual star program was implemented I believe around 1997 so been about 16 years and there really wasn't any formal auditing process by the state to ensure that people were fraudulently claiming the exemption or or otherwise so really this is an initiative that could have been implemented years ago but now we're just we're, we're doing it this year and it's a one-time registration so this will be this year and going forward um, there shouldn't be any other registration so to briefly to describe the process, um, we took the, the department, uh, took all of the statewide 2013 assessment rolls uh, from all cities and towns statewide, and they gleaned off the information, and for each property that was currently receiving a basic, they were given a unique STAR code. So every, every property was given a code, and then beginning in last mid-August, um, we, we mailed out letters uh, in batch, uh, giving the property owners their unique code and then detailed instructions of how to register. Uh, it is our hope that the vast majority of people will be able to register online. We have um, simplified the, the process as best we can and we're hoping that people sitting in the comfort of their homes can go on online and register themselves and be done. Again, if, if people feel they need a person to help, a system, there is that call center they can call. So our website is www.tax.ny.gov. Once you're in there, you get an overview page that has a myriad of information. There's fact sheets, uh, frequently asked questions, uh, and all sorts of information. There's even a demo if you want to see someone uh, registering on YouTube, you can do that. Um, so there's a whole bunch of information at, at people's fingertips there. Um, so once they actually hit, you hit the button to say register for my star, uh, you enter that unique star code from your letter and the website will echo back your property address. You just confirm that that's your property and you're on your way. Um, what you need to register is all owner names on the deed, their social security numbers, and any and all spouses of those owners with their social security numbers. So you're gonna to have to have all that ahead of time. So if you have multiple owners and spouses, you're gonna to have to have all that information, social security numbers and names. Once you enter um, each owner, you have to answer uh, three, three or four simple questions. Uh, the first being, is, is this property your primary residence? Primary residence is 
simply defined as where you reside for the majority of the calendar year. That is your primary residence. And also understanding that a person can only have one primary residence. Then you'll be asked, um, does this person own any other property receiving a residency-based benefit in another state, such as the state of Florida has an, a homestead exemption. Uh, so if you're receiving the Florida homestead exemption, for example, you wouldn't be qualified for a basic exemption in New York State. Uh, if you do indicate that you own another residence, that's your primary, you'll be asked to provide that address. So the next question is, do you confirm that the total combined 2012 federal adjusted gross income on your taxes is less than $500,000 per year? So if you make over $500,000, unfortunately you cannot have a basic exemption. Then you were asked to, act, to provide some contact information, your name and either a phone number or an email address in case something goes wrong with your registration process, we can contact you. Then you certify that all the information that you've entered is correct you get a confirmation page with a, with a unique code on it, and you're done. Just briefly to go over the schedule, uh, the letters were being mailed beginning uh, mid-August, and we're just, I think we're sending out our last batch this week. So everyone should have their letter with their star code and their instructions by now. Uh, I believe in Herkimer County, 54% um, of uh, basic owners have already registered with us, so that's a good number. More than half have already done it. Uh, by December 1st, we're gonna pool the people who haven't registered yet, and we're gonna send them a reminder notice. They'll have until the end of December to complete their registration. Uh, once that registration deadline has passed, we're gonna compile the list of people who are either not eligible or did not register for the basic, and we're going to send that list to the local assessors and they're going to be charged with removing those basic star exemptions. So anyone who's ineligible or it has failed to register is going to be taken off the rolls. <coughs> there will be a, an, a, an appeals process. Um, people who are denied uh, will receive a notice and they, with instructions on how to appeal the, their determination. If they're not satisfied with the initial um, that tax determination, they can appeal to the State Board of Real Property Tax. Uh, the third bullet is just to note that the local Board of Assessment Reviews, the bar memberships, they will not be involved with this um, appeals or grievance process for this. It will be strictly handled through tax and finance. If uh, an owner has lost their letter or they don't know what their star code is, uh, there is a lookup feature. If you put in your information, I believe you put in your, your, um, your name and your property address, it'll give you your, your star code. So you can, if you've lost your code, don't, you know, don't get, get panicked. You, there is a lookup feature. Um, again, you can always call that uh, hotline number too, if you need assistance. Um, one of the reasons I'm here today with uh, my colleague Jonathan, I'm sorry I didn't introduce Jonathan. I got so into my presentation, but I apologize. He, this is Jonathan Lack. He is your Kirkhamer County liaison. Uh, for um, He works with Beth Sadlin over at the Real Property uh, Office. Um, and he's, yeah, so he's charged with uh, helping out in Herkimer County. Um, so our communication program has been quite extensive. I'm here today to try to give this brief presentation about what's involved and what's, what's happening with this. Um, we've had, we had holdings, uh, people at the state fair uh, who, are, who are helping people to register. Um, we're sending out press releases, posters, and time cards, and just trying to, uh, the goal is not to, to, the goal is not to have deny people or, or have them fail to register. We want as many people as possible to register for the, for the benefit that they're entitled to. So this is why we're here and we're going around the state making sure that everybody's afforded the opportunity that they, if they need help, they can get it. Okay, so any new owners, someone who's going to be applying for the first time for a basic star exemption for 2014, very important to note, you still have to apply with your assessor. Okay, there's a form, an application form, you submit proof of residency, that, that process still has to happen. 
So if you purchased a, pro a property new for 2014, you still have to apply with your assessor. And then later uh, next summer, we'll send out a registration notification to those people. So there'll be a second wave of people who are new to the, to the basic program to ask them to register. And that, this is just the contact information that I've reviewed. If you prefer to email your questions in, there's an address, orbs.star at tax.ny.gov. If you prefer to email your questions um, or any kind of other feedback that you'd like to um, let us know. Uh, again, I want to thank you for um, allowing us to come. And I want to say a special thank you to Carol also. To, she helped us logist logistically with setting up things here today. So thank you. Good afternoon. Um, as many of you hopefully know, I'm Wendy Richardson. I work for Cornell Cooperative Extension, and I'm the 4-H Government Intern Program Coordinator. Um, I recently sent out a letter uh, to each of you about the upcoming fall sessions that will be starting on October 22nd. Uh, these sessions are held uh, here in the legislative chambers, and the high school students will be uh, touring county facilities, reviewing the issues, um, interviewing one of you, um, and coming to attend one of the legislative uh, meetings. Each student is required to contact and interview a legislator as part of the program, and I would like to encourage you to invite the high school students to attend maybe a committee meeting as well as required legislative meeting. Um, come meet with them maybe face to face uh, and help them research a county uh, issue for the resolution. Um, I really want to give some validation to this program. Uh, we have a lot of support through the high school uh, history government teachers. Um, a lot of positive feedback um, and uh, just the more you participate, uh, the more involved hopefully we can uh, keep the Kirkwood County young people. Um, I just want you to use this government internship as a valuable tool uh, to see maybe what our future generation's concerns are for their community and maybe uh, help with a potential solution uh, in the future. Um, please let me know by October 9th, next Wednesday, if you are willing to participate with the student interviews. And it has been a pleasure conducting this program with the partnership of the Herkimer County Legislature. I look forward to growing this program as a vital community asset. Thank you very much. Thanks, Wendy. Uh, next, I'd like to call Christine Russell and her uh, subject matter libraries. Hello, I'm Christine Russell, Library Manager of the Frankfurt Free Library, and I wanted to discuss a little bit about uh, the budget. Uh, the Frankfurt Free Library is one of the small libraries that are in Herkimer County, 
during the eight, uh, the last eight years or so, we've been receiving about four thousand one hundred and one dollars annually from Herkimer County. We wish to thank you for maintaining that amount, as it has helped us with our maintenance costs and also running the library programs. Quickly, I will give you some comparable statistics from uh, 2012 and 2013. The figures for 2013 include the months of January through September, which is just finished. I will give you also monthly averages where I can. Library visitors, uh, we took a tally for a week during the summer, and our weekly tally came to 641 visitors with about 92 per day. And this is a small library, believe me. <laughs> Our patron uh, reference questions, uh, they averaged in 2012 of about 214 per month and then versus 219 per month this year. Computer use has been on the average of about 552 users uh, per month versus 589 users this year. In 2012, we had 24-7 Wi-Fi and the interior of the library as well as the exterior of the library and we could measure just the interior and we know that there were 31 users per month in 2012 and there are 39 users this year. Our library is open 37 hours uh, a week for September through June and it's open 34 hours per week for the months of June, August and uh, I mean June, July and August. We have three part-time employees. The, these statistics will give you a bird's eye view of our library, but they won't really show you the other things that libraries do for their communities. <coughs> Therefore, here are a few of our successes. 19 one-hour sessions of summer reading program with an average of 15 children attending each session. The Haunted House Library that's coordinated with the local Kiwanis costume uh, contest is ongoing. The Ice Cream Social, another ongoing event with a puppet theater, a miniature horse to pet, and there's some chivalrous um, sword fighting where an enactment group performed. We have free Thursday and Friday night movies that are shown, and we also have Lego nights once a week. Early literacy classes are on Wednesday morning, and they're for zero to uh, four years of age for children and their caregivers. We have special events like the Magic Show or an afternoon with Santa. Our local authors have done research at our library and then they've come to book sign also at our library. We've participated in the 150th anniversary of the Village of Frankfurt, just uh, finished that on uh, Saturday. We also provide paper copies of New York State tax forms as well as federal forms for the many patrons who do not go online to do their taxes. The Affordable Health Care Act could also fall into this category. These descriptions definitely show that our community is uh, very much oriented, excuse me, our library is uh, very much part of the community. The libraries are the only place in town that consistently serve the public on a regular basis. The library is a safe place to stay off the streets, to read, to study, and to use the internet with librarians who are approachable and willing to help. The building itself requires maintenance. We all know that most utility bills go up, not down. Things break, wear out, and need replacement. A lack of funds from the county would make things more difficult to maintain. Some construction issues would have to be addressed later. We penny pinch where we can. And when working, we are the sole person on duty. The staff is energetic and creative, and they do their work within the designated part-time hours. Please consider all the things that libraries and librarians do for the public when you work on the Herkimer County budget. Thank you. I'd like to call Leslie Paul from also to speak on the uh, library. Good afternoon, I'm Leslie Paul. I'm the director of the Baslow Library here in Herkimer. Um, the library trustees and I are also asking the county to keep library aid funding levels stable for next year's budget. And briefly, a few words about the Baslow Library. Uh, we presently serve over 10,000 residents in a 25 square mile area of Herkimer County. 
We are a member of the Mid York Library System. Uh, the Basel Library budget this year is $212,640. $212, the county's contribution of $8,719 represents 4.1% of our revenue. Last year, funding from the county represented 3.9% of our revenue, and it was used to cover two part-time payrolls, a repair to the light fixtures in our main reading area, the purchase of new books, approximately 130 titles, and for office and audiovisual supplies. The library trustees and I thank you for maintaining this amount for 2013, uh, which will be used to help meet very similar expenses. Without this kind of support next year, there will be fewer part-time staffers and fewer new materials. Money for repairs and supplies will further reduce those budget lines. The Basel Library is a smart investment of taxpayer dollars. The total value of programs and services the library provided in 2012 was $989,538, as calculated with the return on investment matrix developed by the Mid-Hudson Library System. That means for every dollar, every tax dollar the community invested in Basel Library in 2012, it received back $4.40 in library programs and services. This is a great public service return on investment for a community of our size. These figures are based on solid numbers. In 2012, an astounding 73,586 library visits were recorded. 51,422 books, ebooks, audiobooks, magazines, and DVDs were circulated. 3,136 reference questions were answered. 13,022 public computer sessions were logged. And 3,018 people attended 193 educational programs. Our public meeting room was used 88 times by community groups with an attendance of 1,452 participants. <coughs> Berkeley County residents rely on their libraries for early childhood literacy, keeping families entertained and educated, keeping our seniors engaged, for public computers and Wi-Fi internet access, free community meeting space, one-on-one -on -one professional assistance with research computers and e-readers, and services such as faxing, photocopying, and scanning. Each library offers even more resources and services to match the unique needs and requests of their patrons. The libraries in turn rely on the county to make ends meet. Every dollar is critical. In sum, county funding has become an increasing part of our library budgets. These funds are being used extremely efficiently for the benefit of Herkimer County residents. Please keep our funding levels stable. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, and thank you for giving libraries the opportunity to be heard. Um, Leslie and the librarian from Frankfurt talked about the services in the particular libraries. I am not a professional librarian. I'm, on, I'm a trustee in Little Falls Public Library and with the Mid York Library System. For those of you who don't know, Mid York Library serves 43 county libraries in Herkimer County and provides services that they could not afford to provide, like the processing of all the books and many other things. As I sat there today and listened to the gentleman from the Purple Heart Organization, and listened to the woman from the STAR Organization, all of those organizations we are advocates for in the library. We provide services and information to all of the county residents on where they can get the kind of answers they need for the kind of services they desire. I was surprised to see that um, Wanda from New York had, prepare, had prepared some figures for us. She says that there are 41,915 registered library card holders in Herkimer County. 65% of your population is registered with a library card. How many organizations provide these kinds of 
outreach services and touch that many people, that large a density of people. Um, now you all are well educated, you have jobs, if you don't have time to go to the library, you can go online for a book, you can buy a book, you can order a book, you can get the information you need in many ways. There are many people who are out of work, who are disenfranchised, who don't have the kind of experience, and libraries provide them what they need. We have Wi-Fi, we have computers. I figure the minimum we provide is $3,000 worth of services in Wi-Fi, in free books, um, in computer, if they don't have a computer, we have them for, for them to use for free. And we show them how to do it, and we show them how to get the forms, and how to fill them out. So there are services there. Uh, we are also, in Little Falls, and I'm sure all libraries, a no-frills budget. If you cut, if we have a cut in funding, we are going to have to cut services um, or personnel as Leslie was talking about. And this is going to be hard on our whole population. Um, so I will leave you with a quote that my fellow trustee, this was his idea. Um, Libraries can get you through times of no money. Much better than money can get you through times with no librarians. Thank you for your support. Communications received by the legislature and committees to which they have been referred are listed on the agenda. Does any member of the legislature uh, request any mention of any particular communication? Mr. Court. Number 291, please. Clerk will read to number uh, 291. This is from the County Attorney's Office. Advisement of the receipt of the notice of summons, or summons with notice of complaint, matter of application of joint press against Jeffrey Gressler et al. Yep. Else? Pursuant to Rule 6, Number 8, reports to the Standing Committee, I'll ask any chairman of the uh, Standing Committee to uh, report the progress of the committee at this time. Is there any chairman who wants to speak? Mr. Russell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, the budget process has been going on with uh, Mr. Decker and Mr. Wallace. Uh, our plans are on October 11th to have some budget discussions. We'll be started Friday at 9 30 if any. Legislators to the public would like to join us. Another chairperson. Right now we'll move on. We'll go to resolutions on our regular agenda. we we'll start with number 218. I'm sorry, Mr. Brzezinski. Mr. Chairman, could we go from the back to the front, the last one first, though, uh, in regards to the Purple Heart? Uh, you want to bring number 230? Okay. Mr. Hyde. All those, I'm sorry, any discussion? 
All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, aye. No. One no. Resolution passes. Number 221. Human Resources confirm the appointment and the appointments to the Office for Aging Advisors. This resolution confirms the members listed for the Office of Aging Advisory Council. May I call to Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Shaw. Any discussion? All those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Resolution passes. Number 222. Ways and means related to cancel and rejected taxes. This resolution approves the report for cancel taxes and rejects the taxes as listed. May I have a motion? Mr. Russell, second. Mr. Smith, any discussion or debate? Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Russell? Yes. Shaw? Yes. Weekly? Yes. Hartman? Yes. Rose? Yes. Schrager? Yes. Manine? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Hendricks? Yes. Hyde? Yes. Brzezinski? Yes. Mano? Yes. Smith? Yes. Bono? Yes. Ackerman? Yes. Paplinski? Yes. Resolution passes. Number 223. Of course. Long time. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, 20. Ways and means fixing percentages which the assessed valuation of real property bears to the full value. This resolution adopts the county equalization rates as listed in the Mr. Kopinski, second by Mr. Russell. Any discussion or debate? All those in favor. Mr. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Kopinski. Yes. Force. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yes. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Anthony. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Yes. Number 2.4. Ways and means admin accepting records management plan. This resolution authorizes the acceptance of the amendment of the budget in connection with the receipt of the local government records management grant. May I have a motion to submit and second by Mr. Hyde. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, no. Resolution passes. Number 2.5. Highways authorizing implementation and funding in connection with the federal aid project. This resolution authorizes the chairman to execute all necessary documents in connection with the bridge replacement of Creek Road over Nowandaga Creek project. May I have a motion, Mr. Uh, Weekly, seconded by Mr. Course. Any debate? All those in the affirmative, aye. 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 Resolution passes. 26. Ways and means authorizing contract with Thomas Stark for assessment. This resolution authorizes a contract for the county to provide assessment services to the town of Scott Stark. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion by Mr. Core, second by Mr. McClinsky. Any debate? Mr. Rose. Chairman, I, I failed to ask this at the meeting earlier. If it was unconditional staff, it would be required for our office to handle this. And what the potential revenue is for this contract, is anyone that can tell us? Uh, no additional staff would be needed, and the contract would be for $9,870 a year, plus the expenses of the assessment. Plus, plus one contract. And I missed the plus. Plus the expenses for the assessor that would be handling the contract. Any other debate? All those in favor, aye. 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 Resolution passes, number 27. Ways and means transferring funds. This resolution authorizes the transfer of the funds listed. May I motion? Mr. Russell, second. And Mr. Leplinski, any debate? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Resolution passes number 228. Ways and means planning and development amending budget in connection with economic development assistance. This resolution authorizes the transfer of funds as listed. I'm sorry. This resolution amends the budget to reflect the receipts of economic development assistance funding. The Office of Community Renewal. I have a motion. Mr. Weekly, second by Mr. Johnson. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed, nay. Resolution passes. Number 229. This means establishing a position of deputy budget officer. This resolution establishes the temporary position as listed. May I have a motion? Mr. Wilkowski, second by Mr. Flores. Any debate? All those in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed, nay. I'm sorry. What the problem? Of course. Yes. Russell. Yes. Shaw. Yeah. Weekly. Yes. Hartman. Yes. Rose. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Janine. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Hendricks. Yes. Hyde. Yes. Brzezinski. Yes. Mano. Yes. Smith. Yes. Bono. Yes. Ackerman. Yes. Kaplinski. Yes. Yes. That concludes our uh, conclusion portion. Uh,
public comments by legislators. Any legislator wishing to make a comment this time? Mr. Brooks. Well, Mr. Chairman, just, uh, we're having a party on um, October 10th for Kathy Familia. And if anybody in this room hasn't yet had an opportunity to get a ticket or want to recognize her retirement in any fashion, I have those right for the meeting. And, and, and one other issue I would like to uh, to bring up and encourage this legislative body to convene whatever be the Public Safety Committee or the meeting of the full legislature to discuss the implications of the public court ruling. Um, I know that I have uh, read the paper, we got the press release, and I did hear the chairman on the uh, radio this morning, and, and I think it would be prudent for us to have a discussion about just where we should, we should proceed, how we should proceed, and why we might proceed. Um, the, I'm no lawyer, and I would love uh, at some point to have our attorney explain to us the full implications of the ruling, if there are any further um, uh, appeals that we're doing, or as you present additional information, what those uh, uh, statistics might be that may sway it. But I think that it has uh, given us an opportunity now to uh, stop and say just where are we headed. I drive by the PNC site, I see that somebody has been in there and um, attempted to make it look a little better. I've heard it's the owner, I've heard it's the neighbor, I'm not sure who it is, but I was told at one point that any damage that we had done as a county in our secret that we would be repairing it, were there costs associated with that, will we see, be asked to pay money, how much will it be? We spent millions so far, and I think we have an opportunity now to uh, catch um, a chance to maybe rethink the process that we're using. If it's the site, if it's the actual jail, if there are regional approaches, I think the chairman indicated that he'd, speak, he'd spoken to Oneida County about the full board out and reports that Oneida County, the sheriff in Oneida County said they don't have the space for us, but I think there's other opportunities to look, look at perhaps uh, regional sharing. It's an opportunity for us to talk, and this body in this room, I think, needs to be involved in it as opposed to just automatically going forward with, um, with this process. The, the digestion of what the appellate court said uh, where they've held the uh, agreement with the village, and in some in one case outright uh, that the judge was wrong, and perhaps we don't want to pursue this, and we would be looking at other avenues. So I hope that there's going to be a public safety committee meeting, a uh, properties committee meeting, whatever various committees will be convening, so that we can uh, get a better understanding of um, how we might proceed and make certain that we're not just spinning our wheels and spending more money for something that ultimately may not happen at that particular site. And from my perspective, hopefully. Uh, one and all. Thank you. Ross, Mr. Russell. Yeah, I don't think that we spent millions there. Um, we can't get the number. Or the other thing is, I wondered if uh, maybe our county attorney could at least address what the uh, court is saying how it's going to be managed. decision in front of me, I'm speaking from memory. As you recall, uh, the county moved forward with uh, uh, attempted construction of a correction facility on a parcel which uh, was permitted under the Village of Herkimer zoning ordinance. And then uh, in February of 2012, the village amended its zoning ordinance to prohibit the construction. This was just prior to the time the construction wants to begin. Uh, the county challenged that uh, amendment, last minute amendment to the zoning ordinance, uh, on the grounds that the state had preempted, by the state approving the zoning, and preempted the village, uh, and secondly, that it was uh, prohibited ex exclusionary zoning and the county wouldn't be subject to the zoning ordinance. Uh, the judge ruled in our favor based on the papers that were submitted, and uh, the village then appealed that to the appellate division. The appellate division has reversed that ruling, and they have determined that, it, that the village was not preempted by the state's approval process. Uh, and that the issue of whether or not the county is subject to the village of zoning is yet to be determined. And that would be determined by the court uh, um, engaging in what's called a balancing test. So the, the 
the balance of the interests of the county versus the interests of the village. My assumption at this point is that that process will involve testimony and the submission of additional evidence to the judge. Uh, the parties probably will be asking for discovery proceedings, which are typical when you do have a trial, which is what we're headed for. And then uh, the court would make a ruling and then the parties could proceed with whatever appeals might occur after that. So that's an ongoing process and uh, uh, that's where we're headed unless, you know, unless my office received directions from this body to do something different. We will just continue with the lawsuit uh, in that fashion. Other comments? <coughs> I just had one thing. Can we uh, turn over to the committee the possibility of some signage for the Purple Heart County designation? Second by Mr. Hyde, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.